My pet door idea starts with this dog, Athena. She is a two-year-old rescue dog. She stands about 24 inches tall at the shoulder and weighs about 50 pounds. The only way for Athena to get to the backyard was through this sliding glass door. This meant that every time she needed to go outside, she had to be escorted in and out by a human. I weighed three different approaches to installing a pet door. First, there was the idea of purchasing an insert. I soon scrapped this idea, first of all because my doorway is already fairly narrow. An insert would make the remaining opening unpassable and would look a little strange. Secondly, I was a little concerned about security. The next idea was to have a pet door installed in the existing sliding glass door. Installed on site for a minimum price of $800? Um, no. Of course, you could always purchase a patio door with a pet, store, pet door already installed in it for $1,280. Then one day, I was working in my basement workshop, staring out the window. Hmm. Taking a look about the room, what if I built a ramp around the perimeter of the room up to that window, then I could replace the window with a pet door. After some initial calculations, this seemed to be a workable idea. First of all, I researched the largest pet door that would fit into the opening and found this one on Amazon. It's the Pet Safe Wall Entry Aluminum Pet Door Size Large. The description said it would accommodate up to a 100 pound dog and the height just fits into the window opening. After the pet door arrived, I confirmed the width and then figured out the dimensions of the picture window that would be installed in the remainder of the opening. I ordered that window from Lowe's and it took about two weeks for it to arrive. In the meantime, I decided to go ahead and insulate the room. Even though the pet door is designed to provide good insulation, I wanted to make sure there's extra protection from the intrusion of cold air, especially in the winter. The summer is not much of an issue as the basement area already stays really cool in the summer. This is perfect for my dog, she will have access to the nicely cooled basement space in our house, even on the hottest days. In this photo, you can see all of the makeshift shelving that the previous homeowner installed has been removed to make way for the rampway. Next, I used some math to determine the slope of the rampway and used a Sharpie to draw the plan on the plastic so that I could visualize where the rampway would be installed. I used 5 8 inch plywood for the decking and some L brackets to support the ramp and the platforms. Each bracket is rated for 75 pounds. After the ramp was completed, I made a visit to my local Habitat for Humanity restore and found a carpet remnant that was perfect. I installed the carpet on the rampway and the landings and used 2x4s as a border railing. Athena, being the curious dog of adventure that she is, was very easy to train to go up the rampway. Here she is exploring it for the first time. As planned, she can stand shoulder height on the upper landing. Some final safety touches were to install the support cables on the upper landing to ensure that there would be no bending or collapsing. I installed cargo nading around the upper areas of the rampway for safety, as well as using leftover carpet to protect the ducts and wires in the joists. Here's Athena lounging about. You can see that the pet door is not yet installed. Actually, that's the very last step. At this point, I was getting her comfortable with going up and down the ramp using treats, praise, and lots of petting. The next step in the project was to look at the landing area on the outside of the house. As you can see in this photo, the cement window box would have created a very awkward and potentially hazardous entrance and exit through the pet door. I purchased a basic steel window well from Lowe's and used it as an extension to create a safe landing. I sledgehammered out an opening in the existing window well, then fastened the new steel window well to it using cement screws to secure it. I lined the bottom of the new window well with pea gravel and small pieces of the broken up cement for drainage. I used treated 2x4s to span the window well, fastening them with cement screws to the foundation on one side and with metal screws to the window well on the other. This provided even more stability to the window well. Finally, I finished the decking with Trex. Perfect. You'd think I'd finally be ready to install the pet door, but not yet. My fence had to be extended 8 feet further so that the new pet door is within the fenced backyard. It was easy to install a new fence post and extend the fence to enclose this project. Be sure to clear this with your neighbors if you plan to do this. I happen to have awesome neighbors and so I'd like to thank them very much for their help, especially using their tools to dig the fence post. So now that all safety issues were attended to, it was time to install the pet door. I removed the old window and then framed the opening to accommodate the pet door and the new window as you can see here. 
Pay attention to the manufacturer's installation instructions. Looks like I measured everything spot on. Now the final safety issue is finding a way to secure the opening when not in use. This particular pet door includes a security panel that slides in from the top. Because of this particular installation, it is not possible to insert the panel from the top. So I created an interior hinged shutter that can close over the opening and then lock from the inside of the house. When shut, the pet door is secure from intrusion. So finally, here is a video of my dog Athena with a GoPro cam on her collar using the pet door. This is a video of her going out. And uh, she was running back in to get breakfast, and so I slowed this down to slow motion to show a video of her coming into the house. Thanks for watching.